losing time, I'm fading fast I just wanna make it last Try to let go of the past I close my eyes, embrace the blast Sleepless nights and headaches stack Restlessness to hell and back What's my purpose, what do I grab? A slippery surface, a heart attack And sometimes you just gotta believe There's something that'll give you relief There's something that'll have what you need what you need I'm gonna do a challenge and tell you in a bit okay so the challenge is I've been eating out too much lately I'm still down 10 pounds I'm still down 30 pounds from my max weight but I'm eating out too much so I want to try to go as long as I can just using the ingredients in the fridge only. There might be rare occasions when I eat out, but not likely very many times in the next few weeks. It is quite a lot of food. Towards the end, I'm probably gonna have not a lot <laughs> of choices, a lot of rice and things I don't grab for often. Um, so not only to save money, but to lose weight, I'm just going to try my best here. And a lot of, some of these are my food sensitivities. Like I'm not really supposed to have dairy. I'm not supposed to have eggs, really. I'm not supposed to have potatoes and so many things. It's just incredibly frustrating for someone like me. Um, I'm mostly pescatarian, but I have been eating meat again recently, but I don't prepare it for myself but yeah so I'm just gonna record um, how you know long this will go I have um, these types of sugar-free drinks so yeah saving money losing weight feeling better that's the goal so we're gonna see how long I just spent a hundred dollars on groceries and then I had maybe about a hundred dollars worth of things left so yeah stay tuned hello it's Maxine today I'm doing um, a bit of a mix like about weight loss and eating disorders and things along the way and yes uh here's my makeup today <laughs> my head's all over the place because um I was just gonna start off by just talking about this which is like weight loss and weight issues and eating disorders and all of that but it correlates with a lot of things like you know my fibromyalgia and um how that affects me and getting fit and everything like that and it's not an excuse it's just really hard sometimes like if I push myself too much then I'm in pain and agony for days at a time and and then that leads to like depress depression or it makes me want to just go and cheat and feel better getting like sugar overload so it's just like a really ugly cycle but anyway let's um I love paisley <laughs> I've had this for such a long time some of my clothes I've had for like six years what ninja? What are you saying? Can you say hi? Come on. <laughs> ninja. Come up. Come. <laughs> you gotta say hi to the camera. Say hi, Minch. Look. Look. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where to?
to I begin? So, <laughs> for starters, um, well, both my parents were like overweight when they were together, and and uh, up until like my dad got diabetes to the point of needing insulin, and then he was skin and bones, as I mentioned before. But um, they were both like overweight and. Um, and apparently, like, one of my cousins told me that when they all... I had cousins in a different province that I didn't grow up knowing. And I kind of got to know a little bit as I got older, thanks to Facebook. But they met me as a baby and um, they she specifically remembers that I was like a rubber chicken. Like, long and skinny. <laughs> And that's where my skinny journey ended. <laughs> but anyway, um, <laughs> so I think I was like pretty average as a young, young child, but somewhere along the way, um, just due to my really bad diet, like, I don't know, um, my parents like to think, like, I had three home-cooked meals a day or something, but, um, we didn't really, like, have a lot of junk food in the cupboards and stuff, like, I remember some of my friends growing up had, like, lots of granola bars and all kinds of things, we didn't really have that, but, um, just a lot of bread and like day old donuts because my dad worked for um he did overnights at some point and he would bring them back from like Robins or Tim Hortons or something so sometimes that would be my meal before school like a sugary donut and nothing else or sometimes we'd just be in a rush and get McDonald's and and then there were times where, you know, we had home cooked meals, of course, but the unhealthy habits I had with food started at a really early age, as I kind of mentioned in other videos. Um, just because obviously like their own eating habits influenced me, but um, there were times along the way like with my dad's gambling and stuff like you know pawning items and being very irresponsible with money that sometimes we would have like a full fridge of food and then sometimes there'd be condiments and I'd be making like mayo sandwiches and or it was just a lot of bread and processed things quite often my mom didn't enjoy cooking at all, so we'd have, like, my dad was primarily cooking, and because he was, like, a, a not very present person, like, we didn't, nothing was ever consistent, so, um, something in my eye. <laughs> ah! You know, the trick to getting something out of your eye is, well, what I do is I go, <sighs> I blow in my eye and look almost instantly better. I can kind of just see it. <sighs> it works almost every time. <laughs> but anyway, so at a very early age, I was like kind of left to do all those things for myself. Like, um, you know, of course, at some point, my early on, my mom was making my lunches and and, um, I just have weird memories of, like, being at a daycare and her feeding her son, like, and me and my sibling just kind of being there. So I, I just have this strange memory where I'm like, I don't know if, like, we were not being fed at this daycare or what, but there are some weird things happening at the stake here, but, um, 
I don't want to speak too negatively because like there was obvious like mental health issues and stuff too but um anyway uh at an early age it's like I was cooking for myself and like I don't know like do kids make the best choices I obviously wasn't thinking at all about nutrition at a young age I was just thinking like okay I'm hungry I'm gonna eat as much as I possibly can to last me the day because who knows when I'm gonna eat next or whatever so and then I think of course I we didn't like do very much as a family so it just seemed like food was always sort of like this reward like if things were going good like say they're getting work bonuses or or there's a special occasion it was like always about food so junk food and and with them and their own mental health issues like sometimes we were having like pizza for dinner and stuff like all of this might just sound really normal to some people but it's kind of just really hard to explain and I just think from a very early on from very early on like between maybe a genetic factor and how we just were eating in the household um I just always battled my weight and I was also I hit puberty a lot faster like I was 11 years old and I just kind of shot up and then I was um I'm sure at some point along the way I was using food as like a coping like an outlet since I wasn't active in a lot of things like not sports not kind of the, like the poem I wrote where I had a lot of interests when I was really young, like poetry, books, and like animals, and I would even like make Barbie dresses and things out of just random things. I would find like old rags and Kleenexes, and I was like a very creative kid, but with what was going on in the home too, I'm also missing the whole factor of my dad being abusive and an alcoholic and music blaring at really late into the night on school nights sometimes and things just being so chaotic like um you know it just I was like using food to just feel good and as I'm sure a lot of us did but somewhere along the way so grade seven and grade eight were like particularly like really difficult just with with age like I was always like elementary school was really hard like the way the kids treated me and stuff but I was still kind of oblivious to things like I it's when I like first began to notice like the differences between like how things were in my home versus all my friends homes but in grade seven and eight were like extremely tough I don't know like you know middle school for some reason is really brutal where like there's a lot more drama and arguments and fights and and some of these people saw like you know the home I was coming from and and uh I don't know I was just like kicked out of this friend group so that just really affected me and So I just gained like a, a ton of weight between grade seven and grade eight. I went from like, I don't know, I was still like bigger, like maybe 160, 170. Then all of a sudden I was like at in the 230s, like in the eighth grade. And yeah, at that point it was definitely probably just... My diet was just all over the place and and I started babysitting too around age 11 and I don't know what I was doing with my money. I was probably buying candy and crap a lot too. So that affects weight loss and everything. 
but um you know like I had a lot of skinny friends growing up who their diets weren't very good and they were just skinny so sometimes it's quite confusing because you know I was out with my friends just as much as they were being active um some of my friends weren't in sports either but you can kind of see how like their parent was thin and they were thin and then my parents were bigger so I was bigger it's kind of it's just weird but you know I was still like an active kid even if I was considered like fat or overweight or whatever I was always biking places and walking and I just think obviously my diet was really poor but um then finally in grade nine I guess I was like 15 mid year and then like into the grade um nine I was turned 15 and then uh at 15 and a half well I guess that's that summer I got my first part-time job kind of casual and I was um a special events facilitator I don't know if that's the actual title of it but I would do like kids birthdays and sports wind-ups at a gym and that kind of led to a whole bunch of other really awesome opportunities like I was a library monitor for a bit a gym monitor I did banquets and other stuff it was quite neat to be given like a job within the um like for the military like I wasn't in the military but just like a civilian in the military working for them through my mom's connections because she worked for them for from like 19 to when she retired at 55 but um yeah so it was neat having that opportunity and I guess once so sometime in grade nine I don't remember if it was the summer going into grade nine or if it was the summer the time I got my job but that's when I really started losing weight for the first time and also that year in grade nine I started the South Beach diet I heard it through a friend and uh, it's like a really strict version of keto diet it's like you have eggs and veggies for breakfast you have like a cheese string for a snack then you have like a salad for lunch and then you have like some other kind of like celery cheese thing and then dinners like some sort of meat or fish and veggies it's actually like probably a good diet but like by western diet standards it's like very restrictive like no grains no bread no sugar um it is a good diet actually it's the way we should be eating but like going into that so young it just really screwed things up for me like it helped me lose weight which is great but um that's when the eating disorder started so so there'd be a lot of times where I was like purposely starving myself like I could, felt like I could never eat around my friends and stuff and um, I think maybe actually started getting a little bit more comfortable with eating in front of people once I was eating healthier. Like if I was eating, bringing my salads to school or if I was like going and getting a Subway salad or six inch or something, I started to get a little bit more comfortable when I lost the weight. I went from 230 to like 170-ish, 160, and then I kind of plateaued and I went back up and I was always around like 200 so um yeah and I don't think anyone would have really suspected that I was like 200 at that time because like I was pretty like I was bigger than my friends and stuff but I was still like Proportionate. I can't think how to say that right, but um, yeah. So, so my job inspired me to like you know getting active at the job, working in a gym, finally having a gym pass for the very first time in my life, and 
hanging out with people who are trying to be active and like stay fit and or just be skinny whatever but the problem with that was once I started the really restrictive diet once I started losing the weight I became like really obsessive with it and I was trying to Well, I was feeling really guilty anytime I would have something that wasn't on in on the diet. Like I would have one thing and it was never just one thing. I would like if it was one cookie, it turns into like 10 cookies and then I would feel so bad and I like started to throw up. So I had like mild bulimia like it wasn't a daily thing it wasn't every meal but it was always when I was binging and I don't remember where I learned it from or who mentioned it or if I read about it or what but I yeah that's something that kind of came and went often in my life like all the way up until even just a few years ago like around my 30th birthday I was still kind of doing that and I think I haven't done that in maybe like two years so I'm 34 now so I was still doing that even if it was really seldom up until like 32 years old so like you just never know who is affected by eating disorders. You can't just look at someone who's thin and just assume, or you can't just look at someone who's big and think that they're, oh, they just eat whatever they want and they don't care. Like, I felt, have always felt guilty. Like, even now, if I'm just overindulging or I feel guilt and, and, like, I do know I could be doing better, but I shouldn't have to feel, like, guilty. But, anyway, it's just a very complicated thing. Like everything. And, um, let's see. So... At some point in that, I must have um, kind of had reduced bulimia, like, and kind of just stayed around 200. So I was active, I was eating healthy, and sometimes I wasn't. So it was more balanced, but I don't remember exactly. All I know is that it was never really, really consistent. It was only when I um, was binging and stuff, but there were times where it was a few times in a week and then I would kind of think okay well I'm doing damage to my self I'm doing damage to my teeth and esophagus and soft tissue and everything I'm like hey so I would go long periods without that but then I would go back to it depending if my diet was strict again and uh, when I became a server I kind of was I was able to like keep my weight down and I was pretty, t I had like a lot of muscle mass and I was pretty healthy and well, I don't know. Yes and no. Cause those early years I was like drinking heavily and because I was so active at work, I could kind of get away with eating really bad at times. So but um, I did have a lot of strict rules for myself back then too. Like I would never um, eat out after nights out or um, I had a hard time like eating in front of my boyfriends or friends at times. And, and uh, what else? Oh, I kept things pretty healthy in the home. Like there were times where I would never buy bread and I kind of adapted some of the South Beach diet long-term, like, or at least part-time or in the home, I'd keep things healthy because I recognize that I have like a binging problem. So if I kept unhealthy things in the home, like cookies and chips and all kinds of crap, it would just be gone. So I had to learn to not 
keep junk in the home. And even now I'm the same way. Like even though I'm bigger, it's because I usually like go out and get something and then it's like gone and <laughs> it is embarrassing, but it's kind of like well, I know why I'm like this because I'm an addict. Like if it wasn't food, it would be drinking or it would be drugs or it's been really hard for me to stay consistent in the gym or have healthy habits. And even when I was like keto a few years ago and I went from like my heaviest all the way to like, I don't know, to in the teens again, like 215 or 217 or something like that. I, um, I was puking at times again. That's when it started up because I was being really restrictive again. And I'd feel guilty and then I'd see other keto accounts and I was like, oh, I'm not doing as good as they are consistently. So I was comparing myself. And I did used to have about 7,000 followers, but then I deleted the whole account and then I uh, re-added it. And now I'm around like 2,000, but I don't even use it. But um, yeah, I, I found being really active with that was really harmful because I was just comparing myself to others and and how I got to that point in the first place like I got all the way up to 300 pounds is because I kind of see it now how that happened that I uh I told you in a past video where I was like at the lowest point of my life and there was this like month or two where I dropped like 30 pounds from starving not by choice because I had to eat at food banks and and like <laughs> rice and beans and mayo sound great or whatever like oh just add a taco shell and or whatever it's a burrito but it was like <laughs> it was like the only thing I'd have and it would be like once a day if that like it was really bad and and so I wasn't losing weight in a healthy manner at all and so when I got back to Winnipeg and then I was living with my mom, then it's like, oh God, we were just eating really bad around this time because, well, for her, she just lost her mom. She just lost her husband. So, and I just lost my fur babies and me and my grandma were never that close, but it's still, and then me not acknowledging really what had gone on in the home, like with my dad and stuff too. It still hurt me a little bit knowing that like he was never ever gonna get help. He was never gonna beat his cigarette addiction. He was never gonna get healthy. And I've, you know, because he was also abused as a child, I have always just felt for him, like his childlike self, internal child. I mean, witnessing his death too when we had to take him off life support and then all the stuff that had happened right before it got to that point. It was just like so freaking much that I just, at this point in time, I kind of just made this decision where I'm like, I'm not going to beat myself up anymore. I'm just going to eat what I want to eat and I'm going to exercise when I want, if I want and I'm tired of just hating my body. I'm just gonna, I don't, not like I don't care anymore, but I just, I'm tired of weighing myself. I'm tired of the bulimia. I'm tired of everything. So, but you know, when you quit in that way, that's when I went up from, I was always in like the low 200s. And then I just went all the way up to like 300 over the span of like, a pretty short time like within a year or two so I gained like almost 100 pounds in, or did gain 100 pounds in like a year or two of that happening and it all I can really make sense of it in my mind now like even though some people would never understand and it doesn't matter how much I explain to you why and all the history it is really frowned upon people don't understand it's disgusting it's whatever but I just know that that was my coping mechanism like I wasn't and I was still drinking a lot too which wasn't good that in combination with eating bad 
probably did it. So, and I was, so I was 27, 28, 29. Then around 29, I think, is when I did keto. and went all the way down back to my normal. And yeah, and then the bulimia started again. And around that time, everything was like really going pretty good in my life besides my abnormal eating habits. Like I was, you know, into my daycare for three, well, at the time, three years. And then the pandemic hit, or it was about two and a half or three or something years. And then the pandemic hit. So that just screwed up everything. Cause finally I was like making good money. I had families with me for a really long time and I was able to be financially responsible and I was losing weight and I just thought oh finally I'm gonna be able to like get out there start dating again have all the things I wanted in life the white picket fence <laughs> and but no COVID came and ruined it all because like well some of my parents families were like laid off and then some we're kind of getting to that age where they should be in preschool. Like as much as it would have been nice to have them with me all in up until grade one or something, I know that's not realistic and it is good for them to be in a large group with all with kids their age. So I, as hard as it was to like say goodbye to them because I, some of them were with me for years, but um, the pandemic really screwed it up because they were some of them were kind of just right at that age where they should be going into preschool and stuff. So once COVID all happened and the daycare centers were like empty, then they were finally calling families and stuff. And so my numbers went down and it was still fine. I managed to like adapt even though my income was at times I only had like two kids or three kids instead of like four, which, you know, was like a quarter of my income or half depending. But, um, it was just really depressing. I mean, I, not to make it all about me, but just, it did affect me in that way. I can't just pretend like it didn't happen. Like it, because things were so good. And then finally it was like, this happened. Um, that's just how I dealt with it. I stopped caring as much. I stopped working out. I st Another unhealthy thing that happened during that time when I lost that weight, um, I was like going to Popeye's. Like, I mean, there are lots of awesome supplements there, but I was just buying things that are basically just full of like odd ingredients or like, um, sugar substitutes and stuff which isn't really that great like if it's just plain stevia then maybe but it's always like stevia with this I don't know like chemical concoction or something so and that's expensive too like every day going and getting like this five dollar bag of like little chips or a bar and like a coffee that's kind of one thing I was doing often and it was like my the only thing I could do. I mean, everything's shut down and closed and, <laughs> and I'm still trying to continue with losing, but, but I found that my weight stalled when I was having that stuff. Like I was still eating healthy at home, but then I'm having these substitutes and they're not really helping me. They just have me at a standstill. But Anyway, um, hmm, so what happened after that? Oh, so then I, um, I found this different home for us out in the country that was like a hundred grand less than what we were paying in the city, but it had like everything more you could want. Like it had like a built-in place structure. It had a huge fenced backyard. Like I had had problems with our home in the city me and my mom because it was like a wrap a fence all around the perimeter but in the front like some lady let her dog just jump up on her, my fence once and it bit my dog my dog was jumping like keeping 
guard of the property, but this lady just let her dog jump in it bitter and it could have been fatal. Like it was really bad, deep and got infected. I didn't even notice at first, just the placement of it was like so deep. So in a couple days it got like super infected and it right by an artery or something. But um, anyway, with all of it, I just wasn't, I, I had actually always been looking for years and I thought like even while I was doing daycare, I thought, maybe moving would be a good idea. Like this home is less and it's, a, and people kept saying, oh, there's a, a demand, a need for daycare in the country. And I did find that I was able to fill my positions, but um, then this whole other drama thing happened there. And I kind of do want to tell you guys what happened with that. But on the other hand, um, one of the people who was involved in like really, um, bullying me like contacting me and emails and such when I had blocked them and somewhat harassing me um they passed away like that same year so I just don't really want to um probably mention what happened with that because I I feel as much as this person was really harmful to my mental health um I don't want to, um, the only way I'm ever going to bring it up is like if anything happens where they try to, like the family, well now that I've said something it's kind of like, well what is it, but basically we just had a really bad reno situation and, uh, you know, completely took advantage and and you know we even had like home inspectors come and say like how bad things were and that you know they had shut down other projects of theirs and stuff like that and and uh i never even met this person this lady who passed but because it's her family she was messaging me that's <laughs> i always say i'm not going to say anything and then i end up saying something but i just have to say that i'm keeping it as simple as possible but it was just extremely depressing like going from I had a great career career in the city then I'm out in the country it's a small community and everyone knows everyone and we have this awful situation and um thankfully I had older kids for the summer for a change like I had always had like infants and toddlers and kids under five um but at this point I had kind of a mix of younger and older kids who were a lot more self-sufficient so I was just so depressed but they could keep each like really entertained most of the time and then I'd organize some things like coloring and games and stuff or took them to the beach took them to the zoo I think yeah we did some fun things but I was really at a low point because I used to be a lot more involved but I felt like I was definitely sitting back for the first time and not um I guess it was a blessing in some way though because I had older kids and they really could they loved the dogs they loved the cats they could really keep themselves busy we had this awesome play structure in the back they loved and Oh, I just had this memory that <laughs> one time we went down the street and they all, we were, I got them gloves and big bags, garbage bags, and we were cleaning up the whole street of, because it was right after the winter, so we were cleaning up um, garbage along the street and they're just so, <laughs> when kids are a certain age, they just love doing that. Like, it's not, it's kind of, as usual, I ran out of room. I deleted almost every single app and I just have this one video I just took right now for like about 35 minutes or so and I have no space left. I'm gonna have to get a new phone or something or not, we'll see. But anyway, uh, where was I? Oh, so it was just cute memory I had of them helping clean the environment. <laughs> But, um, 
so finally, I think like there were times over those years, my mom lived, my mom and I lived together in the city that I was like begging her to let's go back to BC. And then I think when we found the place in the country, I'll maybe talk about it another day, but it was just like the absolute perfect place for us in the country, like huge backyard, huge space. Um, exactly what I wanted, like one level, the front had like a horseshoe drive, double garage, um, three bedroom, one and a half bath, um, one level, nice deck in the back, fire pit, a huge play structure. There was a whole other kind of like a trailer that needed to be gutted on the property that we were going to turn into like a granny suite or something or whatever it's called. And, uh, so, so much potential and such an amazing place, but everything happens for a reason as they say. So <laughs> someone said that to me recently and my mind instantly went to childhood trauma and I'm like, fuck that. Not everything happens for a reason. Like there's we need to stop saying these ridiculous, ridiculous quotes about things because it's like, there's no reason. There's no good reason. There's no good lesson from childhood abuse. And anyone who, I know that you kind of just have to tell yourself these things sometimes to like literally get through life and not, um, regress in any sort of progress you've made. But I think of these quotes lately and anything that has to do with, you know, like karma or anything, if it has any, if you apply that to life and then you think of childhood abuse, like, no, none of these quotes are, um, <laughs> I know it's not to justify it or anything. It's just to try to make it, you know what I mean? But it's, um, but anyway, something I think I said before we had mo moved to this home in the country. Oh, and it was also like five minutes away from what, one of the largest or the largest lake in Manitoba, Lake Winnipeg. Yeah, so that was another awesome factor. And it was also just, just close enough where we weren't like, you know, there weren't freaking McDonald's and fast food around the corner, but there were amenities close within like gas stations and a really nice community and and uh, but I think before we had moved there I said if this doesn't go well this daycare um, let's just move to BC and then what do you know we ended up doing it <laughs> and I know it's something I really wanted, but my mom's happy about it too because um, her two sisters live in BC and my brother. So, and you know, she only saw them like once every few years as much as they would, you know, be on the phone practically every day with her sisters and stuff. It's not the same. So she is happy to be here now and I'm definitely happy to be here. But, um... Yeah, so this post was mostly supposed to be about weight, but it kind of turned into this whole scenario. But um, my weight always gets affected by what's going on in my life. So that's why, you know, it's like extreme weight loss here, extreme weight gain here, then extreme loss, extreme gain, freaking yo-yo. I just hope to God that what I'm doing now will set me up so that I'm not going to go back to 300 pounds like no matter what goes on in my life in the future I just I'm hoping because I'm really trying to do things sensibly this time I'm not doing I should be eating low carb and low sugar as much as possible because diabetes does run in my family and I should be taking that very seriously and I have been close to being pre-diabetic before so I really do need to um step it up when it comes to that because I know all the effects of diabetes, all the complications, things you don't even suspect that are affected once that happens. And um, But I'm hoping 
we'll see after a few months if this whole new um, balanced is diet is working um, so as I said before I'm like down 30 pounds from 300 like I'm sitting around 270 and uh, I kind of I was sitting around 280 for a while then I went down on 270 and I should be I should have been in the 250s or even less by now if I had gone back into those old habits of mine but I'm actually really enjoying that I lost that 10 pounds and you could call it water weight or whatever but at this point it's been a month of maintaining this loss so now I kind of have it in my mind like well now if I just give it a good week of um, losing like being more restrictive then I'll probably lose another 10 pounds and then if I maintain that and kind of work it out that way I'd like to try to see if that'll help but, um, as you notice at the beginning of this video, I added some videos about, short videos about what I wanted to do. So, it's going to be balanced. It's going to be with things I'm not even really supposed to have. Like, I have a lot of food sensitivities that I showed you before. Like, peas and rice and grain and dairy and pistachios and potatoes and... A whole bunch of things I'm not supposed to have that I'm gonna be getting sometimes but um, what I'm gonna try to do in this next phase is just eat out as little as possible I started like eating out just not I think like with doing these videos it's been helpful in some ways but then harmful because it does put me back in like this I really hate that um, when people say victim, but you know, like people say don't live like a victim and this and that, like these fucking people who haven't, sorry, pardon my language, like who haven't been through what we have for them to say things like that. And even if you have been through something and you still look at others and you think that they're being a victim, you haven't lived their exact experience. Like sometimes... Some people wouldn't be able to survive what some of us have. And anyway, I feel strongly about that. I know it is about mind over matter and blah, blah, blah. But um, <laughs> like victims, like child, children of who survive childhood abuse are victims, period. Autistic adults who've been bullied in and out of the workplace and have been like even abused by partners and friends and everything are victims, period. So I get a lot of attitude about this particular thing because it's like I'm not living a victim life. I'm like very happy and I have a lot of things going better these days, but I just, I am a victim. Like, you cannot take that away from me. Like, I have literal CPTSD, which is major complex post-traumatic stress disorder. And, yeah. And knowing the stuff about myself is actually helpful. So, I don't feel like I'm living like a victim. When I explain these things and my struggles, it's just me explaining. And it's ex explaining in detail or not as much as maybe some people would prefer but it's just me telling you how it is it doesn't mean that I'm living like a victim like oh woe is me it's just that because now I know this about myself I'm able to kind of like connect the dots a lot more and when I wasn't living like a victim as you would say I was just completely freaking oblivious and I was in denial about everything and I got to the point where I like literally wanted to die because I was just pretending like putting so much shit under the rug and it's just building, building, building. And then or whatever metaphor you want to use where it's like you're bottling it all in and then you're just at the top and everything explodes. That's 
you know, you can o only live in this like positive, good vibes mentality for so long before if you don't deal with it, like it's just all going to come out. So don't victim shame, please don't call people victims or living like victims or playing the victim when you have no idea. Like, I think I've heard that somewhere along the way, like when people have talked to me and I've like very barely even mentioned like 1% of what I have lived through or maybe they kind of said things behind my back or whatever, but it's like part of the reason of doing these videos is like to explain to people. I'm sort of like a case study, <laughs> but I'm also hoping to help people who are like me or who've been through things like me. And I'm hoping to help other people who have never been through these types of things to really understand. And, um, it feels nice for once, like I'm talking and I probably sound extremely angry or pissed or like a diva or whatever, but I have zero physical feeling right now when I'm talking about this, which is very interesting because usually talking about this stuff kind of does make me, I get like physical symptoms where it's like I, I'm short of breath or my stomach hurts or I start to get hot or maybe I'm getting a teensy tiny teeny tiny little headache right now actually but <clears throat> anyway um where was I <laughs> being back in BC but so now that I've pretty much been through like a kind of summary of the weight issues I've had oh I wanted to quickly say about the the um so I'm trying to do this, um, what's it called? Challenge to myself where I'm going to just use what's there in the fridge and cupboard till as long as it lasts me. So it's kind of just to see it's to, um, save money. It's to lose weight. It's to not eat out. It's to, um, hopefully prevent binges and all kinds of things because I have like a healthy balanced diet there. I have like fruits, veggies, and like some things that aren't so great, like instant noodles and whatever. But I, uh, I do not have a lot of money right now. I can't be eating like $20 salmon like seven days a week. <laughs> so... <laughs> The prices of things are really mind blowing. Like I've kind of been trying to ignore it for a while, but between the cost of living, like even just in this trailer and having a vehicle and then having the pets and having myself and the gas and everything, it's just like, I'm starting to get really overwhelmed and I know I have to get back to work, but I had to do these steps first before doing that. I had to like go to the psychologist. I had to, I have to work on my health. I have to work on losing weight because there's no point in just jumping back into work if I'm not feeling good mentally and physically. So we're starting to get there. <laughs> but I still have no idea what I'm going to do. If I could snap my fingers and go back in time, I would have never left where I lived in the city of Winnipeg at my home daycare because I just had things so good there and I had like this group of people who were really there for me and I had was at my job for four years and I yeah I had things pretty good and I it all went downhill for a bit there moving to the country as beautiful and as it was out there and everything. It's just still, you know, now I am quite isolated and I'm really struggling financially. So it's kind of like, well, was it the right choice? But, um, I'm working on these things and things will improve. I know it will. And yeah, anyway, <laughs> So since I kind of mentioned things, I'm going to just go through this little bit about what I was going to put in my book. 
some things I, I have like pages and pages of certain topics, but there's some that are only just a few paragraphs and then I was going to organize it better and, but, uh, all I know is apparently being fat is the worst thing a human can be. Abusive, racist, misogynistic, homophobic. Being skinny is the greatest gift. You don't even have to be good looking. <laughs> So that's kind of my experience. Like, remember that guy who was like in prison, but he was like a model and everyone wanted him to. It's just pretty sad that people who commit crimes and stuff are treated better than fat people. Like, doesn't matter. Like, it's pretty sickening. Anyway, um, let's see. I talked about food insecurity, thoughts. Um, I do have a lot of like phobias about. So even though I'm like have been almost 300 pounds and I'm 270 right now, I do have a lot of um, sort of like hippie like beliefs about certain things, like whether it be what I've read or witnessed or whatever. But you know, like. I know how harmful dyes and foods are, like, cancer-causing and all the sh crap they put in, like, children's type of items as well. And, and um, yeah, I'm almost, like, a little bit of a germaphobe about food. Like, for a while there, I was, like, only buying organic and... And, uh, but then I'm very contradictory, like I would, because it's like trying to find a balance, like I'd have like Diet Cokes or something, or Bang Energy drinks, where it's like, that's not good for you. But, um, you know, just everything, where it's like they add icing sugar to peanut butter and stuff like that, just like fillers and foods and stuff like that, it, it's, um, because I'm trying to do things balanced now, I'm trying to think a lot less like that. Think a lot less. Does that make sense? <laughs> At this point, I'm just speaking words and I don't know what I'm saying. But, um, yeah, problems surrounding food, eating disorders, my parents' influence. Um... Oh, well, my sibling tried saying something really hurtful to me about, um, because my dad would, like, such, say such horrible things about me and fat shame me and all kinds of things. It's, like, it's quite mind-blowing when your own father is like that towards you. Like, there's all the other things, and, but when it comes to that, it's, like, you grew up the fat kid, and you were big when you first got with my parent, and now that your skin and bones just because you're diabetic means that you get to fat shame me? Like, are you fucking kidding? Oops, I keep dropping F-bombs in this video. <laughs> but it's, yeah, that's what I mean when I said before in another video about being the ultimate hypocrite. Like, this person was... <sighs> I had a pause because I'm thinking, like, well... In some ways, it makes sense because of the way they were raised, the way they were abused, the way people probably made comments at them. But it doesn't matter how much it makes sense. It's like it's about ending the cycle of abuse and it just seems like that generation was just completely incapable. But, but you know, those things said to me as a kid have like, You know, it is hard to get out of that way of thinking sometimes. And But one thing I did do at my daycare is, like, I was very strict about... I made sure, like, for starters, um, the parents didn't have to provide a lunch. I did, and I always made sure it was, like, whole foods, organic, like, low sugar. We would have, like, junk at, at times, like... Easter and like special occasions and birthdays and stuff, but I tried to give them the best, 
possible foods <laughs> just to protect them because it's like they can eat whatever at home and they could eat whatever they choose to in the future but those early years are just so important so I tried to always buy the best quality everything even if organic is a scam <laughs> I don't see how but some people think that is but um yeah, I witnessed actually something really crazy too about, I'm not going to say anything about it because I don't it, like want to upset the family about this, but I witnessed like a really insane um, progress in their developmental uh, abilities just by changing their diet. Like that one meal a day with me, like I don't know if it really had anything to do with that or just being at the daycare, but um, I, ha I witnessed this a few times where it just completely helped them. And I wish I could go into specifics. Maybe I will one day. And I just wish more parents kind of thought about these things because, you know, sometimes these kids would get dropped off, certain kids, and with a freaking pop tart or something like a two-year-old like that kind of stuff would make me really angry and I tried my best not to like ruin relationships so I always kind of kept it to myself but I'll just say that there were many times where I took junk from these kids threw it in the garbage and gave them like a healthy breakfast or whatever I know that seems really wasteful and awful but um two-year-olds should not be having cookies and pop-tarts for breakfast I'm sorry or I'm not sorry <laughs> I know that's like parent shaming or whatever but um it really bothers me because of just the way I was raised and then how I know that can affect them like I um Early on when I started my daycare, I noticed how insane it was when I would give those all the kids um, sugar, like say they're having cookies or birthday cake or whatever. Um, it would just, they're all like switch, flip a switch and they're suddenly like animals. <laughs> like they're just really hyperactive and just almost like not even there with you. Like before they're very alert and very... It was pretty scary, <laughs> but um, I wholeheartedly believe in that because I witnessed it a few times. I mean, there were always special occasions, at least like once or twice a month, whether it be a birthday or something. And sometimes I would like make things myself, but there were many times that I, you know, after working 10, 12 hour day and putting things off, procrastinating, that I would just go out and buy something from the store and, or sometimes we'd order skip the dishes and stuff and, and they would just not be themselves. It was quite eye opening. And I just wish more parents kind of thought about that. And if what I say pisses people off, well, just please think about these things you're making choices for your child who doesn't have the ability to make these choices for themselves and when they're older will they make these choices for themselves a lot of them might have resentment against the way and you're really not saving money like giving your kids pop tarts for breakfast or whatever is still like I know parents have things tough and you're working and then you have to bring your kids to daycare and maybe had a rough morning but doesn't take very much time at all to like make some eggs or whatever or it could they could have asked me to make them breakfast on certain days or but anyway um I'm almost done with this video it's gonna be another lengthy one as always but um Also, my brother said something hurtful, like something that he probably heard my dad say about me or something where it's like, if 
if he didn't eat fast, he wouldn't eat at all. Like, are you kidding me? Like, what? If you didn't eat fast, then I'd be eating what's on your plate. Like, he was fat too. But because he's kept maintained his weight loss and he's apparently happy with his body now that, like, but I just found that really disturbing and disgusting to try to kind of put blame his eating habits on me when it was like our parents were overweight. We both had the same in food insecurities at home, things being really inconsistent or having chips for lunch someday, like just garbage. And then for him to say that, it's like, okay, well, if anything, if you had to eat faster, the only thing is you wouldn't get a second helping or something, maybe. <laughs> Ugh, that comment really bothered me. I said I mentioned how I told him a lot of the time I was starving and had hunger pains and I was the older child. I was three years older. I definitely see things from a different perspective and I have a lot clearer of a memory of these things because some people don't have, um, I don't have like photographic memory, I guess I, I don't know what it is, but I can like play memories back in my head accurately, like from long ago. But, um, I just, you know, sometimes all I had was chips or a chocolate bar the entire morning and afternoon until dinner time, my body was starving or sometimes, or, you know, sometimes just for n nutrients, like proper vitamins and minerals and I said once I was old enough to work most of my money went to feeding myself outside of the home subway for lunches clothing basic needs tampons very little was provided and when I did need something I was a burden and I had to beg for it so something happened to me um after I moved to the country and I had gone all the way back up in my weight, I went on a walk with my dogs, a longer walk, and I put, here I am sitting at the edge of the shore, pissed off, my left leg's hurting, and my sacrum is killing me. I promised myself I would never get back to this place, but here I am, almost 300 pounds again. And last is, uh, eating disorders. I know I'm poisoning myself, but I can't stop. It's my one addiction, I tell myself. Maybe my body will heal once I start taking my health more seriously, but I know the damage is done. You know, extreme weight loss, 70 pounds in one summer, up and down, yo-yo dieting. <laughs> And how I mentioned before, like the side effects of, if you're making these choices for your children, you're kind of just not setting boundaries or limits and you're letting them eat whatever and you don't want to deprive them of things because you're worried about how they'll treat you or you're worried about looking like you're neglecting your kids or something and you'd rather them be overweight than, than all those other things. Um, I know, and also I'm probably going to get hate comments saying like I'm being fat phobic <laughs> and that um, some of these kids just have problems like hormonal imbalances or whatnot but that is very very rare like if kids are eating proper nutrition they're not it's just a f fact like kids are not um, not all kids have like extreme obesity that is uh beyond their control like it's always I would say like 99% diet and I know this about myself too and it does really bother me but it's just like I said I'm an addictive person and it's been my addiction because I've been trying my best not my whole life not to do other things that are addictive whether it be drinking or drugs and you know even sex can be an addiction to some people it's like they're so concerned about losing weight it's like they're not even it's like they're addicted to sex but they're also just addicted to like burning calories <laughs> and 
Anyway, oh, so back to, you know, the side effects of these things at a young age especially is like, you know, loose skin, cellulite, stretch marks. Like having deformed breasts at a young age because like, it's like I don't even have proper cleavage because it's like I was developing and then it's like I had extreme weight loss. So then I pretty much had a mom bod at a young age and I'm not... This isn't me judging mom bods at all. It's just that when you have that, when you're like a 15 year old or 14 year old, like it's extremely harmful, like psychologically when you're not like the others, you can't, you don't feel comfortable like in swimsuits or, um, you just can't do the things that your friends are doing or, you know, then when you're in relationships and you're feeling so bad about your body, you don't want your partner to see your body, then your partner might think like, oh, well, I can just find someone who doesn't care about those things or isn't deformed or whatever. It is, it's like a lifelong thing and not everyone has the luxury to go and get nipped and tucked and <laughs> I do think that a, a lot that like if once I do start to make progress again and if I continue on I'm gonna have like extremely loose skin on my arms I'm gonna have extremely loose skin on my stomach and it, it's all the way around like here and legs like inner thighs <sighs> even if I suddenly just decided oh I'm gonna become a bodybuilder um, these things just don't go away but um, you know we are more than our bodies and we're a lot more than just our physical appearance. It's just me trying to express the severity of everything. Like, it... hi, Mange. <laughs> hi. Aww. You look sleepy. Anyway, I'm just about done, but, um,. I'm sorry to anyone I offend. I did say before, too, that I know how it is impossible for parents sometimes who are um, really struggling financially, like, when you have to feed your kids and you have to give them, like, instant food and instant, um, you know, just anything that's as cheap as possible is just full of sugar, like, pastas and cer some cereals and... And, you know, uh, nowadays everyone just has such busy lifestyles. It's not easy to make um, three meals a day and all that. Um, I do understand those things, but we also do need to prioritize our time better, every single one of us. Like, there are parents out there doing, um, like... I don't know. It's not that expensive to eat healthy, like, depending. But, um, you know, a lot of us are spending way too much time on our phones or on the internet, so I think there's always time to be preparing meals a bit better. Like, we just all need to stop making excuses, myself included. But, yeah, um, anyway... Maybe one day, since I know firsthand what it's like, like growing up in poverty situations and then, and then being overweight and then struggling with my weight and then struggling financially, living on my own as an adult and everything, maybe I can try to come up with, um, ninja down, just need my jacket, maybe I could come up with, um, inexpensive meal plans for everybody. <laughs> hey, Minge. She's such a rat. She just wants to ruin everything. If she doesn't get attention, she's just like ripping my jacket. And <laughs> I love you. You're good. 
she's a torby cat so she's tabby but she's also um like tortoise shell so she looks just like a tabby but it's kind of hard to tell in this light lighting but she has just like little spots of orange and it's very rare it's called torby <laughs> so she's like part tabby part tortoise shell <laughs> and they have crooked tails i don't know why just some birth genetic defect oh <laughs> you can't quite tell but it's kind of cute when she's happy and she sees me she wigs it like a dog <laughs> anyway thanks for listening to this rant today um watch all the cat fur fly i know um it's not the most entertainment entertaining topic but with along with everything else I'm talking about childhood abuse I'm talking about diagnoses and everything I still have to make a fibromyalgia video I'll try to make that my next video just going into the scar and the MRIs and the CAT scans and the visit with the neurologist and everything um yes like even i just have a hard time with it because i say i have fibromyalgia because i was told i have fibromyalgia but it seems to me like possibly just a default diagnosis and that it could have a different name but anyway and i'll also share how i uh help with my flares like fibromyalgia flares or I could go into a story of like the worst flare of my whole life and how I ruined a huge trip a trip I took to the UK was like ruined because I had like my worst flare I just really thought I was gonna die <laughs> it was really bad such an expensive trip such an awesome trip and um, my weight gain and then my Flare just made it really brutal, but alrighty. Well, I just noticed also that like a huge percentage of my viewers aren't subscribed, so oh, <laughs> please subscribe so that one day maybe I can get monetized and then I'll buy all the cat food in the world for Ninja and, and dog food for Zena and Rain. <laughs> And something for myself, like just being able to get through life and pay my bills. <laughs> That's a dream. But if I never do, oh well, at least um, I'll feel good, like possibly helping people. So, yeah. Alrighty. Talk to you later.